Hi there, my name is Chris Cox. I draw cartoons and I've written a book with a second one on the way. Um, and I've drawn cartoons for so long, um, since I was about 12. Um, and it's something that's really cool because anyone can learn to draw them. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to draw a donkey. Um, it's good for a cartoon scene of a nativity. Um, so if you want to draw a Christmas card, this is the place for you. If you just like drawing donkeys, this is also a place for you. Now, what we did yes last week, not yesterday, crumbs. It was a long week though. Um, what we did was we drew a sheep. Um, you can go back to the first video and watch that. Um, and as I've covered before, lots of simple shapes. Now, this is to help make it a little bit easier because very often people go, mm, I can't draw that, I can't draw. Well, they just tell themselves they can't draw. Um, and as Henry Ford, the creator of the Ford Motor Company, once said, if you think you can or you think you can't, or if you think you can't, you're absolutely right. Or words like that. So if you think you can't do something, it will come true. If you think you can do something, at least you'll have a good go and you'll be much better than those who never tried to start with. So without further ado, let's get on with drawing a donkey. Now, I'm going to use the sheep from the first video, and I'll put a link in at the end of this video. Um, you can get an idea of how to draw a sheep facing this way, and I'm going to draw the donkey facing that way, so you know they'll fit alongside Mary Joseph and baby Jesus and the manger. And uh, yeah, but also it's just good practice just to draw things from different angles. So we've done one angle, let's go for the next angle. So what I've done is Remember to warm up, drawn very lightly, just a box. Doesn't look much like a donkey, but we just need lots of basic shapes. This is quite a funny triangle shape. I'm just gonna sketch it in nice and light. So don't lean too heavily on the paper um, and just relax, because everything that you draw, you can either use the magic of an eraser, or you can just redraw while you're in this rough stage of working things out. So no one can draw. People say, I can't draw a straight line. So like, well, no, technically, unless you have a ruler, you're not going to be able to draw a perfectly straight line. No one can, um, or unless you're extremely skillful. So when it comes to drawing a circle, it's the same. You adjust the lines as you go. It's more like uh, sculpting, actually. If you don't like something, just, you know, if you're making something out of Play-Doh or plasticine or uh, something like that, you just adjust it as you go. It doesn't have to be right first time. So what we've, while I'm waffling on, I've drawn a basic rectangle and I've drawn this strange kind of triangle. It's a bit wonky, but you can just put it to a point there. So we've done a triangle here, goes to a fixed point there. So yeah, it's quite a nice little triangle. And then we've got a circle. And then this is quite a strange triangle, but it's kind of a, if you imagine, so we'll go from about halfway from the circle and do a triangle that does that. Now, you'd have a very pointy nosed donkey if you do that. So what we'll do is we'll just do that as a line to guide us. That's where the nose is going to end. Now, what's next? Okay, legs. Always helps to have legs on a donkey. So let's do this. Um, and we'll do those. We'll keep the legs quite simple um, because Legs of horses, um, pretty tricky to draw, but we can simplify them, it's okay. So we'll just do two, one, two, three, four lines, stick legs. I'm sure everyone's drawn stick man before. And what I'm doing now is I'm just putting some triangles in there we, for the hooves. I think his legs are going to be a wee bit long, so I'm just going to shorten them. He's going to be a very long-legged donkey. If 
you like long legged donkeys and you want to draw one, or if it just turns out that way, that's cool. Just bear in mind that sometimes we have to draw things several times to get it in a way that we like. And donkeys tend to have like this floppy tail, floppy tail, brushy tail, like that. So I'll just do that. Now, one other thing the donkeys have on is when I make the head a wee bit longer, because they do have quite long faces. Um, and then they have um, big long ears. And they no, the ears are kind of like leaf shapes. So if you do something like this, the leaves are just like stretched. If you imagine a circle, and you pulled it from two ends, and then you went like that, you would have point. So kind of do something like a squished circle. Imagine a circle, a bit of blue tack or plasticine or play-doh. You got a ball of it, and you put it on the on the surface, and you just go like that, and it all squishes, and then. You can make it longer and pointier. We'll give him nice, nice big ears. Because it's a cartoon, we can exaggerate things. So there we go. So it doesn't have to look exactly like this. Your legs, your all the proportions might be a little bit different for you. That's fine. Just draw one. Make any changes now. Maybe adjust it. Maybe make the body a little bit less stocky. I'm gonna do. Already made the legs a bit shorter. Totally fine. So there we go, I'm quite happy with that. Now I can start working out where the eyes are gonna go. Now the eyes are always well. Let's start with the ball of the circle that you drew here. And I'll just do a little marker here. I mean, a little marker there would probably be good for the eyes. You don't have to. You can probably get some quite goofy placing of eyes if you want to. But all we need to do for eyes, this is a simple way, is just draw two ellipses, two ovals. And then I'm just going to filter a bit more detail out. So I'm going to put a bit more line on here, and we're going to have curved end of the nose. And I was just going to link to the neck. So we're not going to draw that bit, we're not going to draw that bit, we are going to link the head to the neck. The donkeys do have a bit of a... donkeys and horses tend to have a, a jaw line around here, a bit of a curve that follows... you know, follow that circle, do a bit of a jaw line. Don't have to do it like this. And we're going to give him two nostrils. We're going to do that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now, we can go for simple donkey legs. This would be the simplest way, but just to add a little bit more to the leg. If you notice horses' legs, it's like their knees face the wrong way. And of course, um, actually I don't know whether that is their knee, but they sort of have hind legs that sort of bend a different way to humans' legs. So whereas our legs would do something like that if we're about to squat their legs sort of do this weird curvy thing um, so I'm just going to do bro sort of make two lines like this dum, dum. and then they sort of have this nice curve here And then kind of get in the outline there. So now what I'm going to do is just finish off the rest of the body a little bit just so I get a rough idea. Now what we did with the sheep in video one was we kept the legs really simple and stick like. I think that's quite a good idea. If we've got a nice curve here Maybe we want to thicken the legs out a little bit. So, horses' rear legs tend to do that. 
I don't know if that's the knee, just pretend it is. But they do definitely bend that way. And it's still going to be a simple version of a horse's leg, but there's going to be a nice curve. And then that's sort of the other side. We're going to flesh out the leg so it looks like it's got more meat on the bone. I'm going to do a nice straight line down here till that inverted knee. And then we're going to do a line down there. And then, this is where some perspective comes in, and overlapping. This leg is at the front, so it overlaps onto the body there, and you can see the hind, where the hind leg connects. What we need to do with this one is go down, and the leg goes behind the body. And I'll do a line down here, and we'll do another line down there. Now what I've done there is I've thickened the leg out, so it actually looks like a solid leg. Um, but by adding a little bit of shading at the point where the rear leg goes behind the body, you give a sense of depth of three dimensions. So it looks like the leg's going behind the body and it's, the body's causing a bit of shadow. And that's just a little trick to use, uh, just so it helps the eye be a little less confused as to what's going on. The eye can see clearly that that's stopping, but the brain picks up and the leg is continuing behind the scenes, behind the body. And that's good. So we've got that, and then we'll just do very quick hooves. Okay, and now these legs here will do this. Now I've started the leg a little bit wider at the top, and it goes a little bit thinner at the bottom. You don't have to, it's just the way I did it. You might want to do a leg that's more like that. So I'll just, uh, where the lines run parallel to each other. And the leg is a uniform kind of distance, uh, uniform width. But with this it just adds a bit more visual interest. It keeps the eye more interested if some of the lines are a little bit wonky sometimes. Um, so you'll notice in a lot of cartoons, if you pause, if you find a picture on the internet or you uh, pause the, the video of a, one of your favourite cartoons, very often you'll find, if you just look at the way the arms are drawn, they're thicker at the top or thinner towards the wrist, thicker towards the body thinner towards the ankle, or there's a sort of bit of a change in line, so they go a bit wonky and a bit zigzaggy and a bit out there. Yeah, and that's just to draw your eye, really get, grab your attention. So that's something to bear in mind when you do draw. So it's a bit like this, you don't make the neck chunky all the way through, you can, your neck's always or very often thin, a little bit at one end. And then I'm just adding a bit more detail here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this again. This ear is behind the head, so we'll do this line of the head to show that, that the head comes before the ear. That gives a bit more perspective. And then just do a line here, which um, is where the the um, the outer part of the ear meets the inner pinker part of the ear. Um, and then we we'll just do that. And we'll do the shading thing for the leg as well. Not quite happy with that. Um, so I'm just going to finish that off. Donkeys are a lot trickier to draw. Um, and sheep. I think sheep are sort of a automatic, more automatic. You sort of draw just a cloud and just go for it. So what I'm going to do, I always like to start with the eyes. The eyes are simple, very often expressive. And I just do them as two dots or two long ellipses. And then by leaving a little gap at the very top, um, of just paper or the pencil underneath, that just gives it um, the idea that the eyes are shining. 
like there's light reflecting off the eyes and that makes the character look a bit more alive. Um, now, just going to add in some ink lines. I'm going to follow what I did before. Uh, you can use whatever pen you like. Um, I'm going to add two nostrils there. And then it's sort of like that for a muzzle. That's quite cool. Um, you can use a felt tip pen if you have one. You could use a biro if you like. You could just ooh, jiggle the drawing board. So that isn't ideal, but hey, mistakes part of drawing. And you just carry on and you sort of make the best of them. So sometimes you get some nice mistakes there, happy accidents, look really good. Um, but back to pens, there's all sorts of pens you can get. I use this for drawing in these videos. I use another brush pen for my own personal drawings. Um, what I love about brush pens, not so much this one. This is a bit more felt tippy, a bit harder to get thin and thick lines, but some brush pens are fantastic um, because they give you a really thick swoosh it goes really thin, so thick, like that. And you get a really good, interesting line. It just gives a sense of uh, being a bit more lively, a bit more dynamic. And if you know how to uh, use thick lines and thin lines in the right places, you can really make the drawing pop. But that's something that comes with a lot of practice. So other pens, I used to use a really thin, um, it's like Faber and Castell, there's other makes obviously, but um, like a 0.5 uh, nib, sort of a fibre tip pen. And they're good for technical drawing and for very thin, steady lines. Ooh, some of my lines are quite wobbly, but there we go, you get the idea. Okay, now what I'm doing here, just made a little mistake with this line because the hoof is the same sort of a level as this hoof. So it just looks a bit better if you make the leg before. Just a tiny bit further down than the, and the one behind a little bit further up. And then it looks like it... Uh, your character's on ground, um, and it sort of ends a little bit of perspective, a little bit of believability. It looks like it's actually standing on something. There's a bit of dimen three dimensions to it. Okay, so that's not too bad. I'm quite happy with that. And just, and with the hooves, I'm just going to do this. Just going to colour them in. A bit scruffy, that's all right. Um, I'm going to leave a line just of a just blank paper there, like for white reflection of the hooves. They're a different texture to the rest of the donkey. They're shiny. And just by doing that, it looks like the light's catching the edge. And sort of leaving a bit there as well. That was unintentional there, actually, but leaving a bit of a white gap there, just makes it a little bit clearer uh, where one who starts and where the other begins. And then I'm just going to add... Uh, now, these are sort of quite brushy, so we're just going to do several strokes like that and not be particularly neat about it. But we're going to... we are going to connect the, the tail to the rear a bit better than that. Um, and then just... What you can do is just do some lines like that, just to give an idea that he's on the ground. And then what you might want to do if you're going to colour in the donkey is um, you could leave that a little bit whiter and around the haunches. So we're just going to do that. Because that looks like uh, some donkeys are sort of browner, greyer up here and uh, lighter, paler there, like to match the muzzle. Um, and so when you colour it, you can do darker, lighter, um, and, and do a B 
bit of shadow under here for the ground. But I'm going to just do a few lines. So you don't need much, and sometimes I'm, I do these lines and I think, why did I do that for? I think this is one of those times. It just looks a little bit messy at times. You get the idea. Maybe if you did that with some pencil, just shade it around a little area there. It gives you just a bit of an idea that the character's rooted on something. You're standing on something that's applying pressure to the ground. Oh, he's got a weight. Um, and the very final thing is, uh, I suppose he could be quite a happy donkey. At the moment, he's just sort of looking. So I'm just going to do um, a little smile. And with that, oh, I'm going to sign it too, because, um, and with that, that's how to draw, at least one way of how to draw a donkey. But again, like before, building up from simple shapes, and you can see how you've got um, just a rectangle, triangle, a triangle where you've lopped off the end, and a circle, two squashed ellipses, and basically two, four stick lines, but then we decided to sort of uh, push the leg back a bit, and then do that lovely horse, um, donkey kind of leg, wrong way facing knee, it looks like. Um, I'm sure anyone who's a vet or understands Horse anatomy will tell me otherwise. Um, that's not a knee, but it look, that's what it looks like. And a nice brushy tail. So he's ready to go into your nativity scene. Um, don't forget you can squash and stretch and do all sorts of different shapes if you want to. You could do um, long donkey, you could do shorter legs, you could do bigger head. Uh, just play with proportions and have fun with it. Just remember this isn't the only way of doing it. And the more you play and the more you experiment and the more you... You see, hmm, what if I do this, and what if I try this, and what if I draw this a different way? Um, the more fun it will be, and the more the picture will become yours, and you'll see what works and what doesn't work, and um, you know, you'll get a lot better that way. So thanks very much for watching. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, I shall attempt to do a link in the top corner here to go to the previous video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Um, and I did mention I have a children's book, um, which is this. So if you'd like to buy your own copy, um, there are copies available in my web shop and the link is below. So thanks very much and I uh, hope this helps you with your Christmas scene. Bye for now.